Book of Travels is a freshly released game arriving on Steam Early Access October 11th, 2021 for the box price of $27 US. The game was originally funded for development through a Kickstarter campaign back in October of 2019, reaching over 7,000 interested backers for just shy of $300,000 raised. Book of Travels describes itself as a TMORPG, tiny multiplayer online role-playing game, focusing on a serene adventure through a hand-painted world. I played the game for a few hours today and feel comfortable sharing my experience thus far, as well as my recommendation on if you should buy the game or not in the current state. Book of Travels is an extremely unique game, there's no getting away from that, it's something you're not going to see every day. It's important to outline that unique is not always good, and that small is not always bad, just ask your mother. Book of Travels will not appeal to most people, this is a niche experience and even when this game is bug free and feature complete, I do not believe it will appeal to the vast majority of people that are watching this video or searching for a multiplayer RPG experience. But the people it does appeal to will likely find something magical within. That is of course contingent on the fact that they can finish the game and iron out the critical flaws that I've experienced in a very short amount of time and that the user base has experienced thus far, resulting in a mixed review score on Steam to date. Upon loading the game for the first time, it's very apparent the game is not like most others. Select your server with up to seven other players online, not exactly a massive experience, and then you create your character with the objective being to lean into certain roleplay elements. You choose your background, what type of person you're going to be, your strengths, your weaknesses, and then you set out on your big adventure in the tiny server. The hand-painted backgrounds and general aesthetic of the game can only really be described as charming. To be honest, the actual feel of the world, the ambient sound, the voice acting, it's all very well crafted to give you the feeling of being in an actual game world. You land on the beach shipwrecked as is so often the beginning of a story, and this is where you understand whether or not the game is going to be for you or not right off the bat. There's very little tutorial until you discover the relevant mechanic and then you get a pop-up telling you, oh, this is how this thing works. You're thrust into the world with no real objective and told to just go adventure. Click to move, left click being walk or interact, and right click being run, which you can't do for very long at a time. Almost nothing is explained to you to begin with, and that didn't really improve as you go along. And I say improve, but this is obviously going to come down to preference and what type of experience the developers are trying to deliver, not everything has to be the same, not every game has to hold your hand. As someone who does typically enjoy being thrust into the thick of it without much hand holding, Book of Travels feels like they are taking this a step too far a little bit with some of the lack of direction to start out. It's worth noting that this experience is from when I started my character and where I chose to start the character in the north, it's likely that the experience you will have will vary depending on where you start. An NPC you can speak with tells you to head inland and find the tea house. They should take care of you, provide you with assistance, perhaps help you on your way. Now this is where the first issue presents itself. The world movement is extremely slow. Of course, this is what they're going for. This is the book of travels. You're supposed to be traveling around the world and that's supposed to be part of the experience. But if you're expecting to get anywhere fast, don't. And then I take my time to speak to every NPC in the village, which actually feels like a village. It feels like these people are living there, uh, which games oftentimes struggle to do. This game absolutely nails it. There's people moving around doing things. Everyone seems to have their job. There's conversations going on, the sights, the sounds. It feels good. Some NPCs give you quests. You can choose to accept them. Some give you items that you're going to have to take somewhere else or just tell you information that may or may not be of use later on in the game. This is where issue two comes in. There is no quest log. There is no in-game note system either, which means if I don't remember what the NPC told me, which item they gave me, who I have to go see, where I have to go see them, or any other details, I'm shit out of luck. You can also just sell or drop or lose the items that they gave you, or maybe be robbed by bandits and taken away from you, which gives a definite realistic feeling and something that I assume they're going for but I would have preferred to have been warned about this beforehand. Had I have known about this, I'd have opened a notepad or wrote things down, but after accepting all the quests I could find, I had no idea where to go or what to do. Of course, finding the quests is not easy either, none of which have any indicator whatsoever, a clear design choice to make you feel as if you're in this world and discovering things yourself, not chasing the flashing neon signs, you know, the typical yellow exclamation marks. 
a choice I actually really like, rewarding you for taking the time to speak to each NPC you encounter in the world and truly immerse yourself in this handcrafted environment exactly as the developers intended. The issue being, combine all this starter experience together and you will most likely have absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on or what you're supposed to be doing. Which, to be fair, might be exactly what they're going for, and I probably would just have to start a new character and then just write things down. They do introduce you to some cool aspects right away. You can look at some of the tutorials that pop up, such as what's in your inventory. If you've got a backpack on, if you get robbed by bandits, they're going to take what's in your backpack and you can hide stuff in the pockets of your clothing and stuff like that. So it really does have this ridiculous level of depth that you don't see in games typically. And it does truly feel like a role-playing game and you are being thrust into this world that you don't really know anything about. And aspects of this probably sound terrible, but expectation-wise, if you're warned about this going in, it probably isn't that big of a deal if you come prepared with pen or paper or just alt-tab into notepad. The first smile on my face was of course what this game strives to deliver and what really sets it apart, the tiny multiplayer online role-playing experience. I saw my first player in the tiny online server and we interacted, not with words, but with actions. Book of Travels gives you objectives in the world that you can either do or not, depending on who is there with you and how many of you there are. This NPC needs help figuring something out, but it requires two people to help. You can't do it alone. Will you find a stranger and lead them to the NPC to complete the objective together? You know, this boat requires two of us to row. I can't do it on my own. This lockbox requires two of us to open. This shrub requires three of us to unearth. You can speak only in gestures. Your middle mouse button says hello audibly. On the bottom left-hand corner of your interface, you can have panels that you can pop up to interact. Simple gestures like a picture of a camp, a picture for home, a picture for there's an item on the ground if you want to pick it up, these arrows to go left or go right, and so on. I saw a fellow traveler. We helped each other with an NPC to learn how to tie knots. I signaled for him to follow me to town so we could do more together. He didn't. We went our separate ways in the world, but this is an actual meaningful interaction that I've had, and one that if you typically play MMORPGs, you don't really get nowadays. It was completely organic, and it did it in the right way. It was the game incentivizing us to work together, and then choosing to just go our separate ways. Or we could have stuck around together, as the game has a dynamic party system, whereby you group up together when you're near, and you can choose to travel between maps and things like that, and just continually help each other. Now this, of course, also raises an obvious problem. If you are not playing with a friend or two that are going to be there with you all the time or nobody's near you right when there's something for you to do with one of these cooperative objectives, you just can't do it, which is going to be extremely common since the world takes a long time to traverse. Despite the maps being small, you're smaller and you're also very slow and you're even slower if you've not rested or eaten or you have something else going on with you. If you are relying on finding strangers in the right place at the right time, you better be lucky or find someone who's going to follow you around or you, who you are going to follow and party up, which of course is dynamic. With the servers being so small, seven players on each and the world being the size that it is and obviously going to expand when more content comes in, seeing another person outside of town is probably not going to be very common and having them at the exact place you need them to be even less so. One pro to this con though, of course, is that the game is designed around seven people per server, which means the game doesn't need to be smash hit blockbuster success with millions of copies sold and tens of thousands of players online for you to feel like you're getting the full game experience because you can just do it with a couple of people and I don't think they're going to struggle to have seven people servers running consistently. Unfortunately the game does suffer with some pretty game breaking bugs. The first one being going between maps just wouldn't spawn in NPCs when I entered the new map which required a log out and a log back in to fix and this means that whenever I entered a new map I was forced to think, is this map empty or am I just bugged? Is there supposed to be stuff here? Because a lot of the times there isn't and it does feel like you are actually traveling and you're not really interacting with stuff a lot of the time. Upon logging back in one time, I was also greeted with probably the most game breaking bug I've ever encountered. No longer was I clicking to move around the map in a sluggish experience, traveling slowly across these stunning backgrounds. I was teleporting to my mouse click immediately, like I was cheating in a game of Mountain and Blade Warband, just appearing wherever I wanted at the click of a button. This persisted through map changes and allowed me to explore a good chunk of the map in under an hour, just warping around at will. So the game does do some really interesting things and feels like a slightly more multiplayer and role-playing focused version of the critically acclaimed game Journey. 
The combat system seems pretty interesting based on real-time initiative. The game offers realistic consequences for your actions such as permanent death of your character. You gain experience doing the things you would expect to in an RPG, talking to NPCs and just generally discovering information. Your character is an actual character which gives you various strengths, weaknesses and options depending on how you made it, how you build it along the way and how you play it. Honestly, there are just really interesting mechanics that highlight this game is about the journey and how you choose to participate in that journey, how you choose to live your character's life in this world. You can do a lot, become a fisherman, sell your wares in town, become stronger through that means, trade between cities, buying for cheap and selling for a profit, gather a silent party of strangers and go hunt bandits or whatever else lurks in the world waiting for you. They have the makings of a very interesting experience for a small number of players that this will appeal to. This isn't a bad game by any means. It has some obvious launch problems and design wise, it's going to be very niche. In fact, I would say it's a good game, just very early and limited in terms of how successful it will be by how hard it's going to be to get into for almost anyone who isn't looking for an open experience that makes no effort to hide just how old school, hardcore and just generally difficult it is in nature. The reviews for the game being mixed are pretty uncharitable in my opinion in terms of what they are for, mostly server issues which is a common problem with almost all online games. Though I will say that servers housing seven people should likely not be having issues and the game being available for Kickstarter backers for I believe some weeks prior to this should have allowed them to iron out these problems before launching the game to the Steam audience. But again, they are a small dev studio making a small game. They seem very passionate about it. So I do think these things are slightly more forgivable. All in all, Booker Travels is aesthetically stunning, sounds amazing. It's a very charming, magical, interesting game, likely one you won't want to play and one that clearly needs some time in the oven to bake in some of the ideas that they clearly have, but haven't gotten around to finishing yet. I don't think they should necessarily change the game to be more casual or more accessible if that's their decision, if that's their vision for the product and ultimately the experience that they want to deliver because it's their game, this is what they want it to be. But in the current state, I do not think the game will see a ton of commercial success just due to the nature of said experience, especially with the current state of early access not helping matters at all. My recommendation would be to give the game a try within the two hour refund window as you will 100% be able to tell whether you're interested or not in the concept of the game and the deal breakers will be prevalent really early on. Some people are loving the experience so far and I look forward to seeing what they can do given more development time. Thank you as always for watching. If you could like the video, I'd really appreciate it. It takes you two seconds, totally free. It really helps my video get played with Algorithm Senpai, as well as drop a comment down below. Suggest some game you want me to check out or a video you'd like to see me make. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon if you want to support my content with a few coins to get MMO Watcher each month. And join my Discord to come chat about games, anime, movies, waifus, all the fantastic topics. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate all the people supporting me on Patreon, helping to keep my life of being a full-time content creator possible. And I hope to see you on the next one. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.